Welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will be determining necessary pump power for the operating conditions of this fluid system. I hope you find it useful. Okay, to be more specific, we are going to be determining the necessary power output from the pump motor. In other words, the power necessary to the shaft driving the pump impeller. And we will be working this uh, example and using both British Gravitational System of Units and SI. So, so here's our input data. You'll note that the pump efficiency is 0 0.75 for both systems of units. And well, how do we work this problem? We're going to be using a steady state conservation of energy. And here's the integral form provided here. Where Q dot in is the rate of heat transfer in. Worked out out is the work rate out, typically that of a turbine. And going through the uh, parameters inside the parentheses, little u is the specific internal energy. P over rho is the flow work. And you may recall from thermodynamics that if you add the specific uh, internal energy and the flow work, you get specific enthalpy. We are not going to be uh, making use of this in this example because it's, kind of, it's more convenient to keep them separate. And we also have a kinetic energy term per unit mass and a potential energy term per unit mass. Okay, we should note that if we uh, change the meaning of these uh, terms on the left-hand side, we have to also change the sign. So if we're worried about the amount of heat lost from the system, it's going to be a minus Q dot out goes on the left-hand side. And if we're worried about the work of the pump instead of the work of a turbine, we also have to change the sign. And we will be making use of these, uh, these substitutions a little bit later. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and uh, apply this uh, to this system where we have one inflow and one outflow at point one is the inlet, point two is the outlet. And this is the equation that we obtain. And uh, let's uh, break that down a little bit and let's rearrange it. And maybe just to make sure this makes physical sense. So we start off with the amount of energy that we start off with. It's actually a rate of energy, but let's just call it energy for now plus the amount of energy going into the system due to heat transfer, well, that must equal conservation of energy, the rate of work out, plus whatever is left over at point two. Okay, so let's go back to our original equation. And now we are going to divide through by the mass flow rate, so all the terms by mass flow rate. And let's go ahead and make our substitutions that we noticed earlier, because we're actually going to be worried about heat transfer out of the system, and we are trying to solve for the work of the pump. And when we do that, we get the specific uh, heat transfer out, plus specific uh, work of the pump, plus the energy left over minus the energy that we start with. Okay, well, now I can solve that for the specific work of the pump. And you note that I haven't done anything with dimensions. We are still working in terms of energy per unit mass. And, well, that's good. We could continue to do that, but actually uh, when we're working with pumps, sometimes it's more convenient uh, to work in terms of uh, energy per weight. So we will be making that substitution in a second. But first, let's go ahead and, and group our like terms. So we have a difference in pressure term, a difference in kinetic energy term, and a difference in potential energy term. And in the end, we're going to be grouping our change in internal energy and our heat loss term. Again, we are an energy per mass, and we like to go to uh, energy per weight. So to do that, we multiply the denominator by, by the uh, acceleration of gravity to obtain energy per weight. And when we do that, we get head of the pump is equal to, again, the same term, but now they've been multiplied as we divide it through by the acceleration of gravity. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and simplify this because at 1, the uh, pressure is atmospheric, at 2, the pressure is atmospheric, so that term is going to cancel out. We're going to assume that these reservoirs are large tanks, and so the velocities are zero at point one and point two. And well, the change in elevation term that's delta H, and that is provided. So we're still left with this grouping of terms on the uh, far right hand side, and we are going to determine determine that the head loss term. So my head of my pump is, in this situation is equal to the change in elevation plus the head loss. That's what, that's the amount of energy per weight that the pump must apply to the fluid for it to be operating under the provided conditions. Well, what is head loss? Will be a Darcy Weisbach equation for head loss. 
uh, the friction factor times the length of the diameter times velocity squared over 2g. And well, we know the flow rate, we know the diameter, so all the terms are readily known except for uh, the friction factor. So let's work on that. Well, how do we obtain the friction factor? I've shown in other instructional videos we can use the Moody plot. Uh, but this time I'm going to go with a correlation. There are many correlations out there. And I'm going to go with one of the simpler ones, the uh, Swami-Jane correlation uh, provided here. Uh, the advantage of this correlation is that it is explicit. Uh, the friction factor does not appear on the right-hand side. So once I know all the necessary parameters, I can uh, directly calculate the, uh, the friction factor. It's not quite as accurate as some of the other correlations, but it's within a couple of percent. And uh, you'll notice that this is not a type-in equation. This is actually an equation from my S-Math worksheet. Uh, it's a MathCAD-like uh, worksheet that's free to use, very powerful. I recommend you guys using that. And we actually know everything uh, to plug into this except for the Reynolds number. So we need to calculate the Reynolds number. Reynolds number, again, is the uh, density times the velocity times the height the hydraulic diameter, in this case around pipe diameter, divided by the uh, viscosity, the dynamic viscosity. Uh, we're not provided the uh, velocity, but we're provided the diameter and the flow, so we can really calculate that. So here are the calculations in both systems of units, a British gravitation on the left and uh, SI on the right. And doing that, we can calculate the Reynolds number, and it is a dimensionless parameter, so it has no units. So 7.09 times 10 to the fifth, so it's a significantly greater than 2300. So if we are going to be in turbulent flow, plug in all those values into the Swami-Jane correlation, we get friction factors equal to 0 0.022. That is a realistic uh, friction factor. If it came out to be uh, 0 0.2, I think that would be too high. 0 0.002, I think that would be too low. So this is a, a realistic uh, friction factor. So it does uh, pass the uh, sanity check. All right, well, now I can. I have everything I need. Plugging this into my equation for pump head in English units, I get the necessary pump head is 445.4 feet, and SI, that's 135.8 meters. Well, we weren't looking for the pump head. We were looking for the pump power. So how do we obtain that? There are many ways to do this. Uh, one way I looked at it is just looking at dimensional analysis. As we stated earlier, my pump head is energy per weight. And we know power is energy per time. So to obtain power from pump head, I take the energy per weight and multiply it by weight per time. Well, how do I find weight per time? Well, it's going to be the volumetric flow rate, which is provided, times the weight density, which we know everything there as well. So this is my boxed equation for uh, how to obtain the hydraulic power. And I know everything in this. And I can do it in uh, English engineering. Uh, actually, this is British gravitational. My apologies. But as you know, when we're working with an English system of units, uh, we've got to deal with slugs, and we've got to make everything work out right. And so we're going to need uh, some conversion factors. And when we do that, we get uh, essentially 152 horsepower. SI, it's a much cleaner, and we get 113.2 kilowatts. Okay, well, again, that's not really what we were looking for. That is the hydraulic power. This, These are the power that's necessary for the pump to deliver to the fluid. And if the pump was 100% efficient, uh, we would be done, but no pump is 100% efficient. In fact, our pump is 75% efficient. And so we need to solve for the shaft horsepower, which is what we're really looking for. And that's a simple calculation. And we obtained in the British gravitational units that we need a 202.4 horsepower and an SI 150.9 kilowatts. So that's how you uh, solve a problem like this. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if so, uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, more importantly, have a great day.